Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another Pokemon character study. In these videos, I like to take a deep and comprehensive look at the many characters in the Pokemon world. From their character and personality to their Pokemon teams and actions, the goal of these videos is to spotlight and give attention to some of the cool characters in the Pokemon universe. On top of just talking about one version of a character, I also like to analyze and compare their other versions as well. Across the anime, games, and even the manga, every character has different versions with different personalities, so I found that talking about all of them in these studies is the best way to give you a complete rundown of a character. Today we're going to be talking about someone who I'm pretty sure is one of the most popular females in the Pokemon universe. I had a ton of jokes and fakeouts planned in the script right here, but honestly, we all know I'm talking about Cynthia, so let's get my attempts at humor and jump right in and start talking about her. Cynthia first appeared in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and since then has appeared in every Generation 4 and 5 game, has had numerous appearances in the Pokemon anime, has had a few cards in the trading card game, an official Nendoroid figure, and has also shown up in various Pokemon mangas. She has long blonde hair, wears black clothing, and seems to like Pokemon mythology and ancient ruins. Perhaps the detail most people remember about her though is that she was the champion of the Sinnoh region in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, as well as the first female champion to ever appear in Pokemon. Compared to other champions, I found that Cynthia is crazy popular among fans, and it definitely shows with how much fan art there is of her, as well as how often Game Freak has put her into the games. Now, I can't speak for other people, but I personally believe that one of the big reasons why she's so popular and well-liked is that she's one of the strongest champions we've seen, and quite frankly, just a badass in general. Her Pokemon team design and personality all give off a very tough and serious vibe, and talking about her Pokemon team specifically, she uses a very diverse and strong array of different types that make her pretty challenging to fight. Now, I'm not super great at Pokemon games, but Cynthia was definitely one of the hardest champions I've had to battle, and I think that many people agree that she's one of the toughest trainers out there. Speaking of her varied multi-type team, that might have actually had an impact on her name outside of Japan. In Japan, her name Shirona is taken from the Japanese name for the white-fruited Nandina, which is a flower said to symbolize love and growing emotionally stronger to people. Obviously, the name Cynthia doesn't have those kind of connotations, but there's still some cool meanings behind it. The name Cynthia could have been chosen for a name outside of Japan due to how it sounds similar to the word synth or synthesis, which means combining different elements into one, much like how her Pokemon team is made up of many different types. It's also possible that her name is a reference to the Greek god Artemis, who has been sometimes referred to as Cynthia. Artemis, while usually connected with hunting, is also associated with the moon, which means that Cynthia's name could possibly be a parallel to Cyrus's name, which is a reference to the sun. There's more to Cynthia than just her name though, and I'd like to take a look at her appearance in the game so we can learn more about this fabled Sinnoh champion. I'm going to start with her story in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, and then move to the other mainline game she's been in. One thing to keep in mind is that her role in Platinum is slightly different than Diamond and Pearl, but overall she's pretty similar between these games. There's only a few differences between her Sinnoh appearances, but I'll make sure to clarify what she does in which games when we get to all of that so we avoid any confusion. Okay, here we go. In all three games, the player first meets Cynthia in Eterna City. She gives the player the HM cut and talks a little bit about how she's been studying Pokemon mythology recently, telling the player about a nearby statue of a legendary Pokemon. As you'll see throughout this video, Cynthia's interest in the ancient past and lore of the Pokemon world is one of the central parts of her character, and she's often seen studying old relics or analyzing ancient areas. In Diamond and Pearl, Cynthia recognizes the player's Pokedex and says that you must be helping Professor Rowan, which shows that she obviously knows of the regional professor and his research in some capacity. The truly interesting part of this conversation, though, is that in Platinum, rather than assuming the player is helping Professor Rowan, she says, Is it a Pokedex? Wow, it brings back some memories. This is a very revealing piece of dialogue about her past, which is obviously hinting that she knows about the Pokedex and may have had some experience using one before, but I'll come back to this in a second when we have some more info to go with it. The other thing Cynthia does in Eterna City is that in Platinum only, she gives the player an egg containing a Togepi. After the player and Cynthia part way, she is seen much later on at the Valor Lakefront. She apparently went there to study the legends behind the Pokemon that lives inside of the lake's cave, but is disappointed to find the area is closed off from the public. She mentions the blockade of Psyduck on Route 210 that was blocking the player, and gives you some medicine which will cause the flock to move. As awesome as getting Psyduck medicine is, the bigger thing Cynthia does here is she mentions that she went on an adventure with a Pokedex when she was younger. That's right, this league champion who has always seemed very mysterious and powerful actually had her start as a modest trainer trying to fill in a Pokedex. In fact, skipping ahead a little bit, at the end of the game when you defeat her at the Pokemon League, Professor Rowan shows up and it's revealed that he was present when she became the Sinnoh Region Champion. And it's hinted that he may have been her starting professor all those years ago when she first began training. 
For me, just knowing this fact about her totally changes my perception of Cynthia. I always thought that she was just a strong trainer that made it to the top, like so many other champions seem to be. But knowing that she was somebody who went on a Pokemon-filled Pokedex journey when they were younger makes her far cooler in my opinion, and a lot more relatable than most champions out there. In many ways, Cynthia almost seems like a vision of what a player character might be like if they remained the champion and got older. She's a strong trainer who's still extremely passionate about training and the Pokemon themselves, and sees herself getting involved with helping people a lot. While maybe it's too cheesy to say this, I really do get a sense that she had humble beginnings and is a lot more like the player than somebody like Superstar Diantha or Rock Playboy Steven. Alright, getting back to what Cynthia does in the games. After receiving the Psyduck medicine at the Valor Lakefront, you then meet her once again on Route 210 right after you put the medicine to good use and disperse the flock of Psyduck. Cynthia thanks the player and asks them for a favor, giving them the old charm to deliver to her grandmother in Celestic Town. When the player goes to Celestic Town and delivers the charm, they get to meet Cynthia's grandmother, grandfather, and even her younger sister who all live in the town. These are the only relatives of Cynthia who we see in the games. They all seem to enjoy Pokemon folklore, much like Cynthia does, and Cynthia's grandma is even the elder of Celestic Town. Although it's never specified, I think that Cynthia's love of the ancient past and culture might have stemmed from living with her grandparents in Celestic Town during her youth. The town, as well as Cynthia's extended family, are steeped in the ancient past, and if Cynthia grew up here, it might explain why she has such an interest in all of that stuff. That's just some speculation on my part, though, and it's never officially said where she grew up or why she likes ancient Pokemon things. After delivering the old charm, the player will then run into Cynthia once again, but where they run into her actually changes depending on the game. In Diamond and Pearl, they meet her outside of the Heart Home City Gym after Fontina has been beaten, and in Platinum, they meet her right outside of the Celestic Ruins after battling Cyrus. In both games, her dialogue is essentially the same. She thanks the player for delivering the charm and confronting Team Galactic, and also talks about how Team Galactic needs to be taken seriously, and that she's been underestimating them. She then advises the player to go to Canalave City's library and brush up on the ancient histories of Sinnoh as it might prove useful in completing their Pokedex. At this point, the game stories regarding Cynthia diverge once again, but it's actually in a very big way. In Diamond and Pearl, Cynthia isn't seen again until you challenge her at the Pokemon League, while in Platinum, Cynthia actually travels to Spear Pillar to aid the player in taking down Cyrus and Team Galactic. This is definitely the biggest difference between her appearances in the Sinnoh games. And just the base Diamond and Pearl, Cynthia's role is cool, sure, and how she assists the player slightly, but when you think about it, she never really does too much to fight against Team Galactic. She says they need to be taken seriously, but you never see her actively fight against them, and she just leaves them to the player to defeat, which seems a little weird considering how strong she is, as well as how much she appears throughout the game. In Platinum, what she does is awesome and befitting of a Pokemon League champion. She arrives at Spear Pillar and helps the player through the Distortion World to Cyrus and Giratina. Along the way, she describes what the Distortion World is, talks about how Cyrus is pretty much insane, and that living without spirit or emotion like Cyrus suggests isn't really living. Eventually, once the player has beaten Cyrus and Giratina, she accompanies the player home through a portal to the Sendoff Spring. At this point, the events of both games line up again, and the next time the player sees Cynthia is at the Pokemon League when they are challenging her for the title of Champion. In Diamond and Pearl, her team consists of a Spiritomb, Roserade, Gastrodon, Lucario, Milotic, and her signature Pokemon, Garchomp. In Platinum, her team is exactly the same, except rather than a Gastrodon, she has a Togekiss. Once defeated, she leads the player to the Hall of Fame, where Professor Rowan joins Cynthia and the player. As I mentioned earlier, it's at this point that Professor Rowan reveals that he was last in the Hall of Fame when Cynthia became champion, hinting that Cynthia and Rowan's relationship might be similar to the player in Rowan's relationship. While this is Cynthia's last appearance during the main story of these games, she does show up a couple times during the post-game. Her first appearance after the player becomes champion is when the player is about to depart from Snowpoint City to the Battle Zone. She appears right before you're about to leave and wishes you luck and encourages you to keep traveling around the world and meeting all kinds of people and Pokémon. The second time she appears is if you go back to the Celestic Ruins, Cynthia can be seen analyzing some of the ancient art on the wall. If you talk to her, she'll start explaining how this mysterious art, which is said to represent Dialga, Palkia, and the Lake Trio, might actually be representing Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, and Arceus. She then sort of fangirls over all the possible meanings this painting has, as well as all the legends behind it, further showing how fascinated she is by ancient myths and ruins. The final appearance Cynthia makes in Sinnoh happens when their player obtains their own villa in the resort area of the Battle Zone. 
Cynthia can actually be one of the people who visits and brings along a lot of different conversation topics. Among her visits, she'll talk about the spirit pillar, the distortion world, true strength, and lots of other philosophical questions, but she also potentially drops a very interesting piece of info on us. In one of the dialogues she can say, she mentions how she doesn't want to go home because it's a complete mess with the research scattered all around her house. She then says, my house, even the region is a secret. So, two things we can take away from this. Number one is that Cynthia might be a little unorganized, at least when it comes to her research. I like to imagine that her house looks like Doc Brown's garage, just with more Pokemon related stuff in it. The second thing is that she actually semi-addresses where she lives. Her answer was very vague, with her saying even the region is a secret, but we can still read a little bit into this. It's possible that Cynthia might be saying that her home isn't in Sinnoh, but is instead in some other region that we may or may not know about. With how vague her comment was, it's possible she might live in a brand new region we've never seen before, or even one that we have. The second way you can interpret her words is that maybe she does live in Sinnoh but just doesn't want to tell the player and is being ambiguous on the topic. It's impossible to know what she meant for sure, but I have a feeling that we'll probably see her out someday in the future, whether it's in Sinnoh or someplace else. And with that, we've covered Cynthia's appearance in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, but that's not the last we see of her in the games. As I've mentioned, Cynthia has an interest in ancient ruins and mythology, and that lets her have a reason to travel all over the Pokemon world. Because of this, she's appeared in six other mainline games, which we'll briefly go over now. In Hard Gold and Soul Silver, if the player has a special event Arceus, they'll be able to trigger an event where they're warped to the Sinjo Ruins, which is somewhere north of Johto. Once there, they're able to meet up with none other than Cynthia, who has taken a trip there to research the ruins. She fills the player in on these mysterious ruins' history, talking briefly about how this temple was made not just by people from Johto, but from Sinnoh as well. This is where the name Sinjo comes from, as well as why the ruins look like a blend of the ruins of Alf and Spear Pillar. Cynthia then takes the player to the mystery stage and explains a little bit more about the ruins' strange history and what exactly is happening when Arceus produces an egg of one of these Sinnoh creation legendaries. After receiving one of the legendary Pokémon, the player is warped back to Johto while Cynthia is left pondering what exactly she just witnessed. You don't even really get to say goodbye to her, and she isn't seen again in Heart Gold or Soul Silver. An unknown amount of time after the Generation 4 game, Cynthia would then appear in Generation 5's Pokemon Black and White. Rather than being a main character or in a special event, Cynthia is instead accessible during the post game. She's staying at Caitlyn's villa in Undela Town to investigate the Abyssal Ruins, and after meeting her initially during any season, will then only show up during spring and summer. The player is able to battle her, and her team consists of a Spiritomb, Electros, Milotic, Braviary, Lucario, and her Garchomp. Once defeated, she mentions that the player reminds her of that trainer who faced Giratina, and invites the player to come back and challenge her again soon. You can only have a rematch with her in spring, but if you come back in summer, you can talk to her about all sorts of interesting things, like her philosophies on getting stronger as a trainer, how she seems to be a little bit messy with her research, which lines up with what we know about her house, and how she apparently bought too many swimsuits, and that's somehow a problem. The last two games that Cynthia has currently made an appearance in are Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. In these games, which are set two years after the original Black and White, Cynthia is pretty much doing the same thing as before. She's staying in Caitlyn's villa during spring and summer and can be challenged to a battle only in the spring. Her team has changed up slightly in these games and she now has a Togekiss and Glaceon on her team instead of a Braviary and Electros. She actually does have another role in Black 2 and White 2 which is arguably cooler than her small appearance in Undela Town, which is that she is competing in the Pokemon World Tournament in the Champions League. Her team is similar to her Black 2 and White 2 Undela Town teams except instead of her Milotic she has a Roserade. Upon defeat, she seems genuinely happy for you, but contemplates that there's definitely other strong trainers out there, and she wants to keep meeting many different people and Pokemon all over the world. And with that, we've covered all of Cynthia's appearances in the games. Well, so far anyways. As many people have probably seen, this video is being uploaded before Pokemon Sun and Moon have released, so it's still possible that Cynthia may show up in those games. It's also possible that we might get those rumored Diamond and Pearl remakes too, which Cynthia would definitely be featured in. I was a little bit hesitant to make this video because of all these potential appearances she might have in the near future, but overall, Cynthia's cool enough that I thought I'd chance it. If she does show up in Sun and Moon, or if Diamond and Pearl remakes do exist, just know that I had no idea and that I'll probably have to remake this video someday. Alright, let's keep this steady rolling and talk about another major appearance of Cynthia in Pokemon Media, which is actually her many cards in the trading card game. Cynthia has had 14 cards in the TCG, most of which are from the Supreme Victors expansion. 
Of her 14 cards, 11 are Pokemon, which include Rayquaza, Licky Licky, Lucario, Milotic, Roserade, Altaria, Garchomp, Spiritomb, Togekiss, Garchomp Level X, and Rayquaza Level X. Her other three cards are Trainer cards, which are Champion's Room, which depicts Cynthia's room from the games and allows players to recall their special Pokemon for one less energy, Cynthia's Guidance, which allows you to look at the top seven cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand, and Cynthia's Feelings, which is the only card themed to Cynthia that isn't available in the Supreme Victors expansion, and lets you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. This is quite a lot of cards to dedicate to a single person, and the only other time a character has had this many cards devoted to them was during the Gym Heroes and Gym Challenge expansions way back in the day. Even though Cynthia doesn't have quite as many cards as those gym leaders do, she still has a sizable amount which reflects how popular and well-liked she is, especially among the champions. Let's now shift our focus to the Pokemon anime and take a look at who this version of Cynthia is and what exactly she does. Honestly, she's very similar to the game version, being that not only is she the Sinnoh region champion, but also gets involved with helping stop Team Galactic. She does have a few differences though, so let's take a brief look at Cynthia in the mainline anime. Cynthia first debuted in Diamond and Pearl episode 40, Top Down Training, where she appears in Amity Square to study some ancient artifacts. Upon hearing about how the champion is supposedly nearby, Ash, Paul, and the rest of the Sinnoh group go to Amity Square to meet her. Paul challenges her, but ultimately gets stomped by Cynthia and her Garchomp. After beating Paul, Cynthia helps heal his Pokemon and then takes the group to the stone tablet she was studying earlier and shares its message, which translates to, when every life meets another life, something will be born. After this, she leaves the group's company and travels to Celestic Town to study the legends on Dialga, Palkia, and the mysterious Lustrous Orb. She next appears in Diamond and Pearl episode 96, losing its Lustrous, and 97, Double Team Turnover, where Ash and company run into her in Celestic Town. They meet the anime Cynthia's grandmother and help her try to stop Team Galactic from stealing the Lustrous Orb. It's in this episode that we see the second Pokemon the anime Cynthia has, which is a Gastrodon. Unfortunately, even though Cynthia is pretty strong and Ash and his friends were helping defend the Lustrous Orb, they were unable to prevent Team Galactic from stealing it. After telling everyone not to worry too much but to be on their guard, Cynthia then leaves Celestic Town to face a challenger she has for the title of Champion. Her next appearance is actually on TV in episode 100, Aiding the Enemy, where we get to see her in a battle against Eren of the Elite Four, who is challenging her for the title of champion. Eren ultimately lost in the end, and it seems that getting challenges from Elite Four members is a common occurrence for Cynthia. After defeating Eren, she next showed up in episode 151, The Needs of the Three, and 152, The Battle Finale of Legend, where she helped protect the late Guardians from Team Galactic, as well as assisted in stopping the evil organization. Ultimately, it was Ash and his friends that saved the day, and Cynthia thanks them for their bravery and for helping save Sinnoh. Her next appearance was in Diamond and Pearl 182, an old family blend, where she is seen watching the Lily of the Valley conference with Charles Goodshow. Over the next few episodes, when the conference takes place, she is seen watching and commenting on many of the battles. She seemed particularly interested in Ash and Paul's battle, even seeing that while Ash and Paul are very different from each other, they still formed a bond and learned from one another. Once the Sinnoh League had concluded in episode 189, she was seen alongside the winner Tobias and Charles Goodshow during the closing ceremonies. After this, she made her final appearance in the Diamond and Pearl series in, surprisingly, the final episode of the series. In episode 191, Memories Are Made of Bliss, Ash, Brock, and Dawn watch her battle and defeat Flint on TV. After the Diamond and Pearl series, she then actually appeared in the Black and White series, at least for a few episodes. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go super in-depth with her Unova appearance, but to summarize it quickly, she accompanies Ash and his Unova friends for a little while leading up to the Pokemon World Tournament Junior Cup. Besides having a new summertime outfit, showing her passion for ice cream, and rejecting all these advances, it's also shown that she has a Glaceon. Once at the Pokemon World Tournament Junior Cup, Cynthia has an exhibition match with Caitlyn of the Elite Four to start off the tournament. The battle ends in a tie, and Cynthia sticks around and watches some of the tournament battles and gives a few people, such as Iris and Tripp, some advice about training and battling. After the tournament, Cynthia helps stop Team Rocket's Operation Tempest and assisted in containing the forces of Nature Trio's power. And that covers Cynthia's appearances in the anime. Obviously, I can't go over everything about her anime appearances, or else we'd be here a while, but I tried to cover all of the bigger things she's been involved with and done throughout the Diamond and Pearl series and the Black and White series. I feel like we get a pretty good idea of what this Cynthia is all about. She's a strong trainer who seems to understand Pokemon very well and also tries her best to help people and Pokemon whenever she can. 
This version also likes ice cream, so she's definitely alright in my book. Okay, switching to the last version of Cynthia to talk about, we finally come to the manga. In the various Pokemon mangas out there, Cynthia has made quite a few appearances, but in this character study, I'm only going to be talking about two of them. The Pokemon Adventure Cynthia and the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Adventure Cynthia. Before we start talking about them, just know that there will be spoilers for both of these mangas as I'm going to try and detail everything Cynthia does in them. Okay, with the spoiler alert out of the way, let's take a look. In the Diamond and Pearl Adventure manga, Cynthia's role is somewhat like the games, with a few differences. She's first seen helping the main characters Hareta and Mitsumi apprehend a galactic grunt. She then asks them for a favor, giving them the old charm to deliver to her grandmother in Celestic Town. Before Mitsumi is about to leave, Cynthia comments on how she has a sense that she's strong and wants to battle against her. The next time Cynthia shows up is at Spear Pillar with Professor Rowan, where she helps stop Cyrus's plan alongside Hareta, Mitsumi, and the Sinnoh Gym Leaders. She doesn't really get a lot of presence during the battle, aside from her intro, and it's mostly focused on Hereta and his actions. After helping at Mount Coronet, Cynthia makes one final extended appearance during the Sinnoh League competition, where she and Mitsumi are battling each other. Cynthia says that she actually had the tournament changed up a little bit just so she could fight Mitsumi. I guess she really trusts her intuition that Mitsumi is a strong trainer. The two have a very intense battle against each other, in which it's revealed that Cynthia has a Lucario, until Mitsumi suddenly decides to drop out, which really surprises Cynthia. Later, Cynthia is seen sulking in the tournament stance, visibly upset about not only Mitsumi dropping out of their battle, but also how Team Galactic showed up and messed up the tournament. Mitsumi shows up, bringing ice cream for her, and offers to battle her again, to which Cynthia perks up and promptly agrees. The two start their battle, and that's the last we see of Cynthia in the Diamond and Pearl Adventure manga. Compared to her other portrayals, I found the Cynthia in this manga to have a fairly distinct personality compared to the others. She gets really serious when she needs to be, but you can also tell there's a more whimsical and goofier side to her as well. She also seems really into battling and looking for a challenge. I mean, she did change up a tournament just so she could fight one person she thought might be strong. Switching over to the other manga she's appeared in, Pokemon Adventures slash Pokemon Special, Cynthia's role is very similar to the other versions. You guys can probably guess, but this Cynthia is the champion, gets involved with stopping Team Galactic, and has a pretty badass guard job. Diving into specifics now, in the Diamond and Pearl chapter, she's first seen watching and predicting Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum starters evolving, and then gives Platinum some advice for her battle against Gardenia. It's shown in this chapter that Cynthia has a Garchomp and a Spiritoon, and it's also revealed that she's in Eterna City because she's looking for Rad Rickshaw, who is the missing Eterna City bike store owner. After leaving the Sinnoh Dex Holders company, she then infiltrates Team Galactic's Eterna City building and frees Rad Rickshaw, who had been captured. After this event, she appears much later on at Mr. Backlot's mansion, where she's investigating the disappearance of one of his Psyduck. This leads her, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum to Route 210, where she uses some Psyduck medicine to clear away the massive blockade and locate Mr. Backlot's Psyduck. While she appears to be happy about finding the Psyduck, she's also suspicious about such a large blockade being in such a strange place. Before going back to Mr. Backlot and returning his Psyduck, Cynthia and the Sinnoh kids run into Cynthia's grandmother, and I've gotta say, the resemblance is striking between the two. It's decided that the Sinnoh Dex holders will go with Grandma Cynthia back to Celestic Town where she lives, while Cynthia will return Mr. Backlot's Psyduck to him. She next appears much later on in the Galactic Headquarters during the time that Diamond and Pearl are infiltrating the building. She's able to track down Cyrus and challenges him to a battle, but now her fighting Team Galactic is personal because Cyrus wreaked destruction at Celestic Town, which is where this Cynthia grew up. While the battle is well fought and we get to see Cynthia's Milotic in action, Cynthia is ultimately left defeated and exhausted while Cyrus is able to make his escape to Mount Coronet and Spear Pillar. After this, Cynthia walks out of the building and is shocked to see the three Sinnoh Dex holders who are passed out. After waking them, she is also shocked to hear that they were the ones who freed the Lake Trio from Team Galactic's clutches. After explaining Cyrus and Team Galactic's evil plot to everyone, Cynthia takes Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum to Spear Pillar to confront Cyrus once and for all. After a very long and hard battle, which included every gym leader, Cynthia, the Sinnoh protagonist, and even Professor Rowan all coming together, Cyrus was finally defeated and the Diamond and Pearl chapter concluded. Cynthia also makes an appearance in the Platinum chapter, which happens after the Diamond and Pearl chapter events, and the Heart Gold and Soul Silver chapter, which is actually set sometime before. In both of these, she has relatively minor roles. I won't go too in-depth with her appearances here, as the video's been going long enough, but in the Platinum chapter, she trains her Garchomp to learn Draco Meteor and helps take down Giratina. 
While in the Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver chapter, it shows a slightly younger Cynthia with her, at that point in time, Gabite in Johto, where she sees Dialga and Palkia flying overhead. And that covers all of Cynthia's appearances in the manga. She's pretty similar to her game depiction in them, but there are a few differences. Such as the Pokemon Adventure Cynthia's interest in cycling and racing her Garchomp, while the Diamond and Pearl Adventure Cynthia seems to like battling a little more. And with that, we've successfully taken a look at Cynthia throughout the Pokemon franchise. This was definitely one of the longer studies I've done, but hopefully this gave you a look at Cynthia throughout all of her various appearances. Even though all of her versions are extremely similar to each other, what with all of them having her as the champion and using the guard shop, most of them have a unique flair or difference that sets them apart. I think for me personally, my favorite version of Cynthia is either the game version because of not only how tough she is, but the idea that when she was younger she helped run with the Pokedex, or the Diamond and Pearl Adventure version, just because it's kind of funny to see a depiction of Cynthia that's a little more offbeat. Regardless though, I really like Cynthia in general and hope that someday we'll get to see her again. Anyways, what do you guys think of Cynthia? Do you like her and think that she's the best champion we've had so far? Maybe you dislike her and think that she's overrated? Feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I hope our paths cross again. Hey, thanks so much for watching this character study. So I probably should have mentioned this at the start of the video, but if my audio sounded a little bit weird or strained throughout the character study, it was because I actually recorded all of my lines of dialogue a couple days after I had surgery for a kidney stone. So I was pretty tired, my throat hurt super bad, but it was the only day I could have recorded, so I tried my best to power through it. It may or may not have paid off, I'm not sure. Hopefully it didn't sound too bad, but even when I was editing it, I thought there was a couple times it sounded a little weird. Um, I guess other than that quick note, uh, feel free to give me any feedback or critique on this character study. So going forward with this channel, I want to do more character studies, but I just feel like maybe how I do things right now, being like a super in-depth and long character study, aren't necessarily what you guys want to see, I'm not sure. So really any feedback on if this video was too long, if it was too short, or if you want me to expand on a certain part, uh, just let me know in the comments section below and I'm really thankful for any sort of feedback you guys can give me. Also just a quick note, but feel free to suggest any characters you'd like to see too because I really do look at your guys' suggestions and Cynthia was one of the top requested characters for me to do a study on. Anyways, thanks again for watching you guys and I will catch you later.